hey guys what's up welcome back to the channel it's cynic alex and today i want to do a dedicated video guiding you through dispatch missions so that you can make the most out of this game mode i already gave a few tips in my first impressions video which i will sort of repeat again today because they're very important tips but i wanted to go into more depth about the rewards and also the gameplay and the mechanics that you need to be uh, cognizant of you need to be aware of so that you don't fail the missions and you can you know get as far as possible keep in mind you don't need to be like a super whale to get to sector 10 obviously it helps but you can get to sector 8 sector 9 sector 10 without any pierce on your cards so it's not even that you need the latest crafting uh buffs to get that far but the first thing we're actually going to talk about is linked to the acquire rewards so i'm going to go here and acquire my rewards from each of the sectors so you guys can see what a full 12 hours worth looks like because I painstakingly went through and completed all 15 dispatch missions for all nine sectors. And I'll also explain why I basically stopped after the ninth sector. So as you can see from these rewards, the gold is really, really good. I'm getting close to 180,000 gold per sector. And again, I can collect this twice a day. So you can basically double that and then multiply it by the number of sectors to get my day's worth. So that's about 360,000 gold multiplied by nine. I'm going to whip out my calculator here because I don't know what that is. Um, and that is about 3.2 million gold that I can collect every single day for free. Now, one thing you may notice is that the other rewards like the Chaos Nornstones and stuff, it seems to be a lot lower. See, 9, 14. Let's see what I get here. I got 24. That's actually really good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. 25 is really good as well. 15 is awesome for me and then 10 okay so you're gonna notice that these rewards are lower a lot lower than what you saw yesterday if you had engaged with this content if you hadn't yet grinded out your dispatch missions and, and set characters to dispatch then you may not have seen and may have may not have noticed that the rewards changed but they have changed so I want to cover that first. So they posted a, a, a notice here at, at night yesterday, dispatch mission sector dispatch reward modification notice. So basically they said, listen, uh, we realized that we set the wrong reward calculation. They made a mistake with math, which I can really relate to because I make a lot of mistakes with math and the reward rate was higher than they originally planned. So players were getting way more of those secondary materials, you know, the Awakening Crystals, Mandalay Gem Fragments, Chaos Nornstones, uh, Tier 3 materials. They were getting way more than they had planned. For those of you that don't believe Marvel Future Fight, you're hesitant of Netmarble, nerfs, you know, a general stinginess for rewards. You know, I can, I can understand that you don't believe them. Let me show you two screenshots. This was after about an hour, I believe. This was sent by my uh, Alliance member, Ace of Carnage. He got about 100, and not about, he got 132 Awakening Crystals. You can see only 6,000 gold. I believe this was after 30 minutes or after an hour. So this is insane, guys. This is obviously broken. And it obviously was not a sustainable business model for the game. Because this is more, this is as much as you get from playing through three squad battles for the week. And if you're able to get that in an hour, you basically don't have to play the game anymore. So obviously this is absurd. Now, this is the new screenshot that he sent me after, I think this is like three or six hours. Again, you can see the gold is much higher and this is much lower. Now, obviously this is going to be a stark contrast and a lot of people are going to be pissed off because they wanted the big number and now they're getting the small number. But you have to realize, you know, devs make mistakes in games. It's unfortunate to make mistakes like this where you give too many rewards and then you have to take the rewards away. It's almost as painful or it's, it's probably a bit more painful than giving away bad rewards and then increasing it a little bit, right? It's better to under under promise and over deliver than over promise and under deliver. But um, I can understand, you know, when I saw the dispatch missions and from my understanding, because all of the sectors give gold, right? Every single sector dispatch gives you gold. My thought was this is a gold farming mission this is supposed to be primarily for gold farming but they went a step further and they added in these other rewards and the really cool thing is that each section each sector has different rewards right mandalay gem fragments from sector i don't know seven uh you have titan component packs from sector eight you have awakening crystals from sector nine and you have ccf in sector 10 that's actually why i haven't done sector 10 yet it's really hard which i'm excited to do but it's also not a, a reward that i actually need the gold would be great the dispatch gold would be great, but I actually don't need the CCF for now. I'm in sort of a very blessed, lucky position, but yeah. So the rewards have been nerfed 
in my opinion they've just been you know brought back down to reality but uh, some people are going to be upset my take on it like i said it was pretty obvious from the get-go for me i collected like over 150 uh, essence of dimension in six in, a, in just like a couple of hours a few hours so it, it was just like why why do i even play world boss like i was i was thinking that i don't even have to play world boss anymore i certainly don't have to play the story mode fragment farming right this one over here that they worked so hard for this content why would they work so hard to make this content fun and exciting and, and rewarding and then just completely invalidate it, right? It doesn't really make sense to, to have a, a, a game mode that you don't even play, right? It's just passive income to be better than playing World Boss Ultimate, better than playing... Uh, I mean, in, in some ways, it could be better than playing World Boss Legend because you only get five runs a day, and if you get 15 CCF per run, that's 75. In a few hours, I could get more than 75 CCF under the old calculation if you just look at that and, and just replace that, you know, that with CCF. So it's absurd to me that people were expecting this game mode to basically eclipse all other game modes. I know we need the resources, but the game also needs to make money, right? So it's sort of like a give and take. But And the other thing is, I don't want the game to be an auto game. Like, I don't want it to be AFK Arena, right? I don't play Marvel Future Fight to not play Marvel Future Fight. So again, that's the other thing for me. I would much rather play and earn the rewards than just have them given to me like a baby being spoon fed. So yeah, I, I don't have a really big deal with it. Obviously, if you're, if you're free to play or you're a newer player, the idea of catching up with tons of rewards is really great, but it's just not a sustainable model for the game and uh, they had to change it. So to apologize, they actually sent everyone in the game. I already collected it, so I can't show you in game but they sent everyone 50 of each of the materials that you can get as sort of like an apology, which I think is a pretty decent uh, apology because it's 50 CCF, 50 tier three materials, etc. But yeah, the rewards have been sent so you can collect them and the, uh, the the rewards from the dispatch mission have changed permanently now. So you, you know, you're going to see, you're going to be seeing a lot lower numbers than before. So that's the, that's the sort of first part of the video. I just wanted to address that because that's the elephant of the room. People are complaining about it, yada, yada, yada. Some people are not going to say like, this update sucks. They're obviously on drugs, but it's fine. Uh, now let's go into the actual guide for dispatch missions. And believe me, even with the reward changes, the reward nerfs, the gold is still exactly the same. So they didn't nerf the gold reward and they didn't nerf the dispatch chests. You know those screenshots you keep seeing of people getting CTPs and premium cards and Odin's blessings? Yeah, those dispatch chests have not changed. So you definitely want to keep playing. By the way, for those of you that want to know, I actually pulled a premium card from the dispatch chest yesterday on stream. I pulled this card. So even your boy got a premium pull from those chests. It's actually insane. So you definitely want to be playing the dispatch missions. Now, I've already gone through, but I'll explain really quickly one more time how to filter different character types and abilities to know what you need to do for the different sectors. And keep in mind that this sector is bugged. It's, it's just it's just not worded properly. It says mind ability. It's supposed to be healing ability. So whenever it says healing ability or mind ability or fast movement ability or leadership ability, whenever you have to see the word ability, what you want to do is go over to the team page really quickly here at the store, Alex, for once you're not spending money. Uh, go to the team page. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. Click the little uh, blue blue button with the arrow at the top there, reveal this menu, and then click all abilities. And then you can filter by the ability. So fast movement, and it's gonna show you all the characters that have fast movement. Alternatively, if you want, if you don't like this system for whatever reason, you can individually click on characters, click on details, and you will see their listed abilities right there. And you can just, you know, memorize it or write it down on a spreadsheet or whatever you want. Alternatively, if you don't like that system either, let me just, uh, you can go into the Marvel Universe tab. Again, you can just click on a character, go, in, go into info and you can see their abilities. This is probably a pretty fast way to filter through abilities if you really hate the filtering system, but the filtering system is really easy. Now, if you wanna know about the, the character types or the race of characters, because you will see that pop up sometimes where it says that you need to use characters that are creature types or other types or inhuman types. It's a little bit embarrassing when Marvel Future Fight fans ask me who are inhumans. I'm like, you're playing Marvel Future Fight, shouldn't you know? Like, <laughs> I know you know who the humans are, the inhumans, they're, it's pretty straightforward. But anyways, if you don't know, for whatever reason, it's fine. Like the creature types and the other types, I can understand. So you basically just go into any sector, like any sector that you have, even sector one, and you go to dispatch. 
and then you're just going to use the drop down menu there underneath or on top of silver surfer and you're going to click the all button and then you're going to filter by the race there so you have human you have alien you have creature mutant inhuman and other so that is a really really quick way to find out the characters that you may need and then just run them through uh, the missions as you can. Now, now that we're here, I'll talk about actually dispatching your characters. So the way that the dispatch works is it's just gonna calculate your growth score and add it up for all of the characters. So you can see all these characters from Luke Cage down to Thor. When you add them all up, for me, the, the cumulative growth score is 6.6 .6 million. And you can see I'm pretty close to the next uh, bonus supply amount, but I'm not quite there. The bonus supply amount is going to increase the amount of gold that you get per hour. It's unclear, but I think it also increases the rewards you get from here. However, there's not that big of a chance. It's only a 10% bump from one to the other. And generally speaking, you're not going to be able to go much higher than whatever, you know, so you can see I'm, I'm at I'm at the fifth, whatever your, your ranking is, you're, you're great. So I'm at the fifth for sector one. I'm at the fifth for sector two, but then the rest of them are all four. And you can see the amount of XP drops as my characters become less and less built up. But, you know, all of them except the first two. So I'm, I'm dispatching on nine sectors. Seven of the nine sectors are in the growth grade four. So for every player, the vast majority of your teams and your dispatches are going to all be in the same grade. So technically, I would get a little bit more rewards if I undispatched, if I took all the characters out from Sector 2 and Sector 1, and I went and I put them in the sectors that I really wanted those extra rewards from, like let's say, I, like, like this for example. But again, it's only a 10% change, right? So bonus supply is 30% there, and it's 40% uh, there. You know, if it was more, if it was 20% or more, I would probably do it, but it's a bit of a hassle. I don't really care that much. Um, and it's not even clear if you're getting more of this uh, it's, it is clear that you're getting more of this because you can see 225 and then it drops to 210. But again, it's only 15 gold per minute. So it's really not that much. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would just make sure that you set as many characters as possible. Now, if you once you set the characters and to set the most characters, like to, to unlock everything, all you have to do is just play through and beat the five missions. You don't actually have to do the quests. The quests where it asks you to bring specific characters. So as you can see here for Sector 10, um, I haven't done any of the missions, so I can't actually dispatch any characters to Sector 10. But all I have to do is beat the be, beat the missions, beat the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I just have to beat them. I don't have to do the quests. If I do the quests, right, like if I do, um, if I beat this one within two minutes, if I beat this one with three alien characters, if I beat this one with one or more eternal character, one or more eternal ability, then I will unlock a longer dispatch time. So you can see the dispatch time for here uh, for Sector 10 because I have zero of the quests is two hours. But in all of the other sectors, because I've completed completely maxed out the quests or actually I haven't maxed out Shanghai. Sorry. So it's a really good example here. Shanghai, I'm almost maxed. I'm at 12 out of 15. It's eight hours. And then if you go to Kamertage where I'm 15 out of 15, it's 12 hours. So the last few quests actually matter a lot for the time. If you can, you should do the quests because you only have to do them once and they're not that difficult for the most part for the first like three, four sectors. They're not that difficult and um, it gives you more dispatch time. More dispatch time means you don't have to check your phone to collect the passive rewards as often, right? So if I didn't have any quests, it would only be two hours, which means that I would lose a lot of rewards while I was sleeping unless you have an insane sleep schedule. So you want to bump it up to at least like five, six hours. I think eight hours is probably ideal because you sleep for eight hours or you're at work for eight hours or whatever. Again, if you want to make the most out of the, the passive rewards, you don't have to. You might feel ambivalent now because they've nerfed those passive rewards. But for me, it's still free rewards, which I really like. And it's a ton of gold. So, yeah, I would aim for at least 12 of the quests on each of the sectors because that's going to give you an eight hour timer for those passive rewards to build up now. To give you actual tips when you're playing the missions, because this is going to be the actual most difficult part. I want to show you, let's go over to Sector 5 and let's just pick a mission here. So I have to clear with Red Guardian. Well, the quest says clear with Red Guardian and clear with one or more creature types. Cool. Well, I'm just going to jump in with these three characters here, Beta Ray Bill and the two um, Warriors of the Sky. Actually, you know what? I'm going to swap out one of the Warriors of the Sky for my man Thor. So we're going to go in with this team here and I'm going to give you some tips on, you know, what to do when you're playing these uh, dispatch missions and you're trying to beat them. 
So of course, you want to use your strongest characters, characters that are tier 3 or transcended, characters that have, you know, really good builds, Uru, CTPs, or really good obelisks, etc., right? You don't want to bring weak characters in, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is type advantage. If you can notice, it's kind of hard to see, but the characters, the enemies you're fighting all have typing. They're blast type, combat type, or they are speed type. So you want to bring an advantageous type. Now, most of the time, the grunts have less HP. The grunts are the ones that I'm beating up now. The grunts have less H HP, and they usually cover one or two different types. They're not always just, just blast or just speed. It'll be like a mixture. So you're not going to necessarily be able to get an advantageous typing against the grunts, but you definitely want to bring and pay attention to having type advantage against the boss. Because especially from Sector 5 and on, the boss will have, you know, 15 million plus HP. So Karnak here is going to be speed, I believe. Yeah, he's speed type. You can see right there on the, on the bar for the HP. And he's got 20 million HP. So if I were to bring a bunch of blast types, I actually did bring one by accident. But if I were to bring three blast types, I'd be at a huge disadvantage. On the flip side, if I brought three combat types or two combat types, I would be in a really good position. Now, because we have three characters popping off their skills simultaneously, you're going to see some frame drops for sure. Sometimes it honestly turns into a slideshow. They're not done optimizing this game mode yet, so you just kind of have to live with it. My phone is almost two years old. It's a OnePlus 7 Pro, and I get the slideshow action happening, so don't feel bad if it's happening to you. But yeah, type advantage is really important. Obviously, universal types are great for dispatch missions because they have type advantage against blast speed and combat, but you should definitely pay attention if you are, you know, just barely um, missing a mission. Boom, look at these awesome rewards, dude. If you're just barely uh, running out of time on a mission because the timer's pretty tight, it's three minutes, you definitely want to pay attention Pay attention to type, uh, you know, the, the type advantage. You can always check, keep in mind, you can always check here what the boss is going to be. So you can see here, almost all of the enemies are blast, including the boss. So loading up on a bunch of speed types in this case is not a bad idea at all for 5-4. So I'm actually going to jump into a little bit of a harder mission so it can take a little bit longer when I'm running. And also from these missions on, from Sector 7 onward, like you want to push as far as possible for the passive dispatch rewards. But from Sector 7 onward, you know that it can drop, you know, we, we scrolled through the items and we showed you, uh, I, sh I showed you before, but it can drop CTPs, premium cards, and Odin's blessings. So you definitely want to farm these. So here he's um, he's blast, but we do have a mixture of enemies, different types. So we're just going to actually rock with this team again. I think it's probably fine. You know what? Let me bring Odin. He's kind of cool. And he's got a uh, he's got Odin. Odin's really good. Well, I'll explain why Odin's really good. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and rock with this team here. So yeah, type advantage is really, really important. But honestly, I think the most important thing is actually all defense down. It's pretty interesting. All defense down lost a lot of value in the last six months or so because of Null and Mephisto and World Boss Legend. Um, but now it's back. It's back, baby. So yeah, all defense down is really important. It's actually probably more important than Pierce. That's right. Bringing characters that can apply 60, 70, 80% all defense down, like Odin, Silver Surfer, um, uh, Deadpool, Holiday Lady Deadpool, or characters that can drop a lot of all defense down on their tier 3 skill, that is super duper important. So make sure you're bringing someone, or like Doctor Strange or whatever, or White Fox with the uh, holiday uniform, you make sure you're bringing at least one character, especially in the later missions, that has all defense down and can apply it. Also, keep in mind that all defense down is still going to clash. So if you have one character, like Luke Cage or Captain America, that's applying like 30% all defense down, and then you're trying to come in with 80% with Deadpool, you're going to have a lot of fluctuations. Your damage is going to be really good sometimes when Deadpool gets there first, and then your damage is going to be pretty bad sometimes if uh, Captain America or Luke Cage gets there first because they have a much lower uh, all defense down threshold. So yeah, here comes the slideshow. So yeah, all defense down is definitely king for this game mode. Pierce does matter, but not as much. You know, Null is really good, but even Null starts to slow down on some of the later sectors, and he needs all defense down to start doing more damage again. The other thing you really need, you need all defense down, and you also really need ignore dodge. Yeah. For those eagle-eyed viewers, you've probably noticed that the bosses and the enemies are above level 70. This is a big clue for future content and future upgrades coming for us as players. I can definitely see them uh, introducing new ways to, you know, you know, basically a level cap, an agent level cap and a character level cap. Because as you can see here, these guys are level 74. 
So because they're a higher level, they're going to dodge more of your attacks and you're going to miss more. So bringing ignore dodge, I mean, especially ignore dodge on a leadership actually matters a lot, believe it or not. So leaderships like Gambit, leaderships like Cable, those will really go a long way. You have the passive ignore dodge on some player on some, some characters kits. You also have ignore dodge on tier three, like Loki's ignore dodge for 10 seconds, etc. Ghost Rider. That's really good. So characters like that are also going to be really good. It's also why Odin is really really good for dispatch missions. Odin's one of the best characters because he combines all defense down and 100% ignore dodge on his fourth skill. So he basically has the total package. We're going to go up to another level here and we're going to run this through against Bucky here. Uh, but those tips are really good. Another tip I have for you guys is if you're not going to be auto playing it, you can obviously auto play it if you're strong enough. But if you are uh, you know, still struggling and you need a few more tips, this one is really crucial you do have to sort of play manually. Basically, right before you're going to get to the end of a zone, usually it's two zones and then it's the boss zone. So I'm going to I'm going to take over here towards the end, but when you get to the end of a zone, you may notice that the time stops. I'm actually going to turn off the sort of um, auto play where it doesn't show anything on the map because I actually want to see the timer and everything. Uh, oh. Ah, okay, my characters are doing too much damage. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to take control of Beta Ray Bill here because we're doing too much damage and they ran through the portal early. But basically, when you have beaten all the enemies, when you've beaten all the enemies in a zone, the timer stops. But your other timers don't stop. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that, okay? So we're just going to we're gonna kill these guys here, uh, and then you'll see what I, what I mean. Beta Ray Bill 4 and Odin working together to clobber all these super enemies with super tanky builds here. Okay, here we go. So there we go. So you can see the timer has stopped. But what hasn't stopped? My cooldowns. So this is a really good trick to take advantage of if you're struggling. I can switch now and I can charge up because I know Beta Ray Bill's awakening skill is ready. I can now sit here. If you have enough patience and you want, you can sit here and wait and wait. And Thor's tier three will charge up completely. I wonder if it goes back if I switch. 14, 33. No, it stays. So I could literally charge up Odin and um, Thor's tier three and then go into the arena. And when you go in, that's when the timer restarts. So you can see it's, it's still at 204. So this is a huge tip for players who are just barely missing the timer, you know, whether it's the two minute challenge window or it's the three minute uh, stage window. Use this to your advantage, abuse it. Why not? It's a feature, not a bug. Uh, and make sure that you're, you know, charging up your tier three skills, uh, making sure you, all of your cooldowns are uh, off, like your, your skills are ready to be pressed before you run into the next arena. All you basically have to do is, you know, take off the autoplay just before your characters clear the zone, because if autoplay's on, they're just going to run straight through the zone and uh, trigger the next scene. So these are the tips that I have for you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll throw them up on screen here uh, in sort of a, you know, uh, summary matter. But yeah. I think dispatch missions are really fun and they're also very, very rewarding. I would say if you can auto farm overnight, auto farming stage seven one seems like a really good option. It's the easiest stage to farm that gives you the best rewards because you want to be getting or you want to be having a chance to get premium rewards, right? Odin's blessings, CTPs and comic cards, premium comic cards. Um, and because it's seven one, it's going to have the lowest level. Like you can see war machines, there are only 74. But once you go up to 70, 70, well, they're still 74. But yeah, you, you sort of get what I'm saying. They, they're going to go up to 75 when you get to stage eight. So yeah, uh, those are the tips that I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Hit me up in the comments down below with any questions you have. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.